gives us the color of God, the Ancient of Days. And my title tonight's subject is The Good Shepherd. That's my subject, The Good Shepherd. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Let us read. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. There's only one man that can live from the Ancient of Days. That's the creator himself. And he has hair like the pure wool. The only man who needs to know that is the so-called black man of America. Many of you studied <coughs> the men. Many of you brothers have studied in secret about this name, but you thought he was a spirit. You knew the name had power, because that's why you went in your secret closet and prayed. You wouldn't even call the name in front of your wife though she was studying under your order. She was seeking knowledge of the East herself, but she's not allowed. You would never tell her the true name of God, Yahweh. So you go in your secret closet and pray. Pray to Yahweh in secret. But you were not taught what the white men were taught in your same fraternal order. The white mason is taught different from the black one. That's why you always have to stand before the white judge trying to give a signal. You always giving a distress signal, have mercy on the widow's son. But it's always before white men. Hallelujah, Yahweh. See, after you get all your degrees, the white man is still your master. If you take the 33rd, you admitting he's your master. So he rules on. So when you study, the one thing left out of all your lessons is the fact that Yahweh is the black, nappy-headed, woolly-headed God. The true and the living black man. And they didn't let you know I'm his son. Although everything you study about is about me, everything you study is about me. I'm going to make all that clear to you in a minute or two. In the meantime, the Ancient of Days has hair like wool, nappy hair, and he's not a spirit. No spirit has woolly hair. Better clear that up right there. Spirits don't have woolly hair. So the Ancient of Days has hair like wool. You don't know what that is, go get a sheep. Go get some sheep. And it's like your hair, you know, like my beard. Now that's the Creator. Now let's go look at Revelations 1, 13 through 15 and look at the Son, His Son. Let's look at a description of Yahweh's Son. If I'm His Son, I fit this description to the letter. <clears throat> if I fit the description to the letter, there's no need for you to go look for another one because he's going to have to look just like I look. And he has to do what I'm doing and beat me doing it. And no man on earth can, can surpass me publishing the name Yahweh. No man on the planet earth can surpass me publishing the name Yahweh. I'm unbound. I don't, I'm not bound. I'm free to do it. I have it on billboards, on the trucks, buses, a mile long going down the highway. You hey, wow, hey. Yahweh. The world knows that. that. That lets you know who I am, just the fact that I do it. Now let's look at the sun and see, do I look like this? Read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, that's another, see, that's another sign. That's written down as a Masonic sign, a symbol. In, see, the Son of Man in the midst of the seven candlesticks. They call that a Jewish sign. It's a Hebrew signal anyway. Seven. Seven is a perfect number. 
the number of completion. In the midst of the candlestick, you have three. So the one after three is the fourth. From either side, the one in the middle is the fourth. And the number four is foundation. And the foundation is the fourth tribe of Israel, Judah, who's chosen to be the ruler forever. That means that in the midst of the seventh candlestick means that the son of man, the son of Yahweh, would be from the tribe of Judah in the midst of Judah, doing a perfect work. And I'm doing it. And all the men of the earth, the nations are in all nations. I'm the only one that can explain these mysteries. You can use the symbol, but you can't understand the mystery. Because in the beginning is the word, and all of missionary is in the Bible. All of it is based on the Bible. The Bible belongs to me. It's my book. And I'm the only one that has prevailed to take the book and loose the seals there. That makes me the Lamb of Yahweh. I'm the Lamb of God, Yahweh. The book tells you I will cause the Gentile, that's white people, to consider that which they have never considered. And that means I will cause all the Masons and Eastern Stars to consider things you've never considered. If you're not one, then you're learning what you never learned before anyway. If you are one, you're learning what you never learned before anyway too. And I have created a woman, the woman that I have resurrected up from the grave in America is the only free woman on the planet Earth. All other women are bound and subject to their men in general. Fulfill in Genesis that for having broken the law under Eve, then you had to bow down and submit to your husband. And all women are subservient to their husbands, whatever nation you're in. But I have set our women free. Those who wear in white are free. You're not a bond woman because you are now back into your original state as a servant with Adam, as a part of Adam, to Yahweh. So no man on earth can rule over my daughters of Zion but Yahweh himself and his son. Nobody else can. All other women, they even tell you in church, silence. Let your women be silent in the church. To this day, you arguing trying to become priests, trying to become preachers. When your white men get ready to discuss politics and the high